So we'll start with number three. Um, so we're going to, in number three, pull a, a ping pong ball out of a bag. Uh, and we're going to assign the random variable x to what's written on that ball. So this would be x along this axis. So what values could x have? x is the number on the ball, the number written on the ball. Uh, so some balls are labeled 1, some are labeled 2, and some are labeled 3. So our random variable could be 1, it could be 2, or it could be 3. And these bars that we're going to draw are going to reflect the probability that each of these will happen. So if we count them all up, there's 5, uh, 3, then 2. So in all, we have 10 ping pong balls. Five of them are labeled 1, so 1 will come up about half the time. That's the probability of getting a 1. Probability of getting a 2. Um, well, there are 3 of the 10. Uh, this would be 5 tenths, so 3 tenths would be something like that. Alright, so 3 tenths. 3 tenths probability of getting a 2. And then the 3, there are 2 of the balls that are labeled 3, so 2 out of 10. one-fifth. So this just is a, a bar graph of the probabilities of each of these random variables. Let's look at five. So a random variable is called n, and it'll, it'll have a value of however many digits a number has. n is the number of digits. Okay, so the number of digits, digits like one is a single digit number, 25 is a double, a, a two digit number, and 345 is a three digit number. Um, and we're dealing with numbers from 0 to 999, so we're not going to have any four digit numbers. Uh, so our random variable could be a one digit number, a two digit number, or a three digit number. Uh, and we can't have any more digits than that because we're staying below 999. Uh, so what's the probability that we'll get a one digit number? Uh, well, there are 0 through 9, those are the only one digit numbers. Uh, from 0 to 99. So there's 10 of them. That's 10 out of 1,000. Uh, 1,000 total numbers from 0 to 999, if you were to count them up. Uh, so we have just really pretty small chance of that happening, of getting a one-digit number. There's so many more two- and three-digit numbers that it's not very likely. So this, we'll just keep in mind, is like 1 in 100. Uh, 10 out of 1,000, or 1 out of 100. So 2, how many uh, 2, or what's the probability of getting a 2-digit number? How many 2-digit numbers are there? Um, well, from 10 to 19, there's 10. Okay, so that's 10. From 20 to 29, there's 10, so that's a total of 20. From 30 to 39, there's another 10, so that's a total of 30. And so we have 9 of these groups that, have, that are little blocks of 10 numbers, so 90. So 90 out of... Uh, a thousand or nine out of a hundred. So this is one out of a hundred and so nine out of a hundred needs to be to scale so that might be too much but uh, there it is. Okay and now three-digit numbers. How likely is it that we'll get a three-digit number? How many three-digit numbers are there from zero to 999? Well the first one is a hundred. So from a hundred to nine from 100 to 199, uh, that's going to be 100. And from 200 to 299, that's another 100. And so we're counting them similar as we did to the, the two-digit numbers. And so we're going to have 900 numbers uh, that are three-digit numbers. So let's see. Let's see, 900 out of 1,000 or... Uh, let's say 90 out of 10. So this is 9. So this thing needs to be 10 times taller than it is, which is just not even possible the way we, way we have it. So let's... Ah, here we go. I'm just going to move this down, if at all possible. Here we go. Down to here. And we've got our pen keep drawing. So this would have to actually be 10 times bigger than this, so we'll just, I don't even think we have enough room. 
but obviously it's just way more likely that you're going to pull a three-digit number from 0 to 999. So this is uh, 1 in a, let's see, 10, yeah, 10 out of 100, or 1 out of 10, however you want to think of it. This is 90 out of 100, and this is, uh, let's see, 900 out of 1,000, so 9, 9 and 10, or 90 out of 100, or, nine, let's see. No, this is, uh, this is 1 out of 100. This is 9 out of 100. And this would be, uh, 90 out of 100. 9 out of 10. So we can compare them all. So this one's 9 times more likely than this, and this is 10 times more likely than that. So, uh, so that's interesting. Alright, let's move on to... Number uh, eight. So we want to use this uh, this histogram of the probability distribution. And there it is. Uh, now we want to find what's the probability of uh, x being odd. Probability that x is odd. X is this number. We don't really know what the experiment is, but apparently. 3 is pretty likely, 2 is less likely, 1 would be the least likely thing to happen. So what's the probability that that it'll be odd? So if it's odd, it could be 1 or 3. So we'd have to look at what's the probability of 1. Well, let's look at it this way. This, the probability that it's 1 or that it's 3. These are the two odd numbers. So that'd be the probability of 1 plus the probability of 3. Then we'd have to subtract the probability of it being 1 and 3, but it couldn't possibly be both. So the probability of 1. Well, the probability of 1 looks to be about half of that, so about 0.1. Plus the probability that it's 3 looks to be about 0.4. So we're at half. Uh, there's a, a 0.5 probability that we'll get an odd number. So this is just a lesson in reading a probability uh, histogram. Uh, you just go to the random variable, go up to the probability, that's how likely that is to happen. All right. Um, now we'll move on to 11. Uh, what's the probability of, of, of 2? So let's figure out what that's talking about. Calculate the probability of tossing a coin 20 times and getting the given number of heads. Uh, so this is a binomial experiment. We're doing something n times, 20 times. And we want to know what the probability of getting exactly two heads is. All right. So remember that there are uh, several parts to this, but uh, in general, this is the formula. The probability that our random variable is equal to a certain number of successes. That would be k is 2 here. It's equal to n, choose k, times the probability of a success to the power of the number of successes times the probability of failure to the number of failures. Uh, so, n choose k, that'd be 20 trials with two successes. The probability of success is 50-50, one half. Uh, we want to succeed twice, and we want to fail the rest of the time, so that would be 20 minus 2, that'd be 18. So you notice that 18 plus 2 will always be 20, or whatever these numbers are, they'll add up to 20. Uh, 1 minus p, that was a silly thing to write. Uh, what's the probability of not getting a heads? That'd be half. Uh, so that's it. Then we just need to find out what that number is. So um, 20 choose 2 times uh, 0.5 to the second power times 0.5 to the 18th power. A uh, very, very small possibility that this will happen. Um, so we would take this decimal and move it to the left four places. So 0 0.00018. So not very likely. Like just a little more than a 10 
tenth of a percent, or a hundredth of a percent. Uh, just really not likely. Um, so let's look at something that uh, that might be more likely. 16. What's the probability that we will have 15 heads? You'd expect that the most likely thing would be to get half, right? It's to get 10 heads. 15 is just a little over. Let's see where, where that gives us. So 20, choose 15 times 1 half to the 15th times 1 half to the 5th. Uh, so we grab our calculator. We'll just pull that back up because most of it's what we want. That's 0.5 to the 15th. Insert a 5 there. Uh, we'll raise this to the 5th. So 20 choose. Oh, that was supposed to be 15. So 20 choose 15 times 0.5 to the 15th power times 0.5 to the 5th power. Let's see. Uh, a little more likely. So. Uh, 0 0.0148. So almost one and a half percent. Um, now, you shouldn't think that uh, you have a 50% chance of getting 10 heads exactly. Um, that's not the case. Getting exactly 10 heads does not have a probability of a half. Um, but it is the most likely thing to happen. Um, so, just a side note. All right, now we'll go on to just a, a different kind of a binomial experiment where we are uh, randomly guessing on a multiple choice exam. Uh, so each question consists of A, B, C, or D. So you have question number whatever, you have choices A, B, C, and D. You randomly pick one of those. Uh, so let's say that's number one, and then number two is going to be the same, A, B, C, or D. And you're going to do this for 30 questions. Okay, so the experiment is, is 30 times randomly guessing the answer to uh, a given question. Uh, so we'll do number 20. Uh, what's the probability that you'll get six out of those 30 questions correct? Exactly six. Not six or more, not up to six, but six exactly. Well, there's 30 questions. We're going to conduct this experiment 30 times. And we want to have six, exactly six, successes. What's a success? Getting the answer right. Okay, so what's the probability of getting the answer right on one of these questions? There's four questions. Only one of them is correct, let's assume. So the probability is one-fourth. And how many times are we going to have a factor of one-fourth? We're going to have it six times, times the probability of getting that question wrong, which is more likely. It's the probability of three-fourths. And that's going to happen the rest of the time. So 24 times. And that's it. And then we just calculate that probability. Thirty-two six. This is going to be 0.25 to the sixth, and this will be 0.75 to the 24th. So you've got a pretty good-ish chance, 14% or so. Uh, just checking my numbers here. Uh, 0.25, 0.75. So 14% chance, uh, 14 and a half, 0.1454. Actually, I'll, that 4 should get rounded to a 5. So that's about how much. So you get a pretty good chance, actually, of, of getting exactly 6 right. Um, now, what, we'll do another one, number 16. We want the probability that we will get, uh, no, not 16, 24. 24. We want to get 26 right. That does not seem likely at all. Uh, we want to get 26 answers correct, exactly 26. So 30, choose 26 times 1 fourth to the 26th times 3 fourths to the, uh, what did that leave, 4. <coughs> 
bring this back up because it's got mostly what we want. This just needs to be raised to the 26th. So I insert a 2 there for 26, and we'll delete that. That should be a 4. So, whoa, really, really unlikely, because this is close to all of them correct. Um, so this would be 10 zeros, then a 4, 1, 7. Okay, let's write that. So that's, I mean, if you move the decimal place over there, that percentage is so small. Uh, it's so unlikely that you would be that luck lucky to answer every question randomly, uh, or not every question, but almost every question, 26 of the 30 correctly. Uh, so, yeah, very unlikely. Um, now we'll go on to another question. Um, number 28. So, calculating the probability of k successes from a binomial experiment consisting of n trials. So this is really arbitrary. This, it's not flipping a coin specifically. It's not answering questions necessarily. It's just telling you you have n trials. You want k successes with a given probability. Um, so now, the thing about it is, though, k, you want k to be less than or equal to 3. So it could have several possibilities. You want n to be 7, 7 trials. Uh, and p, the probability of succeeding, is 0 0.3. Uh, so what could happen here is, well, we, what we want to find is the probability that k is equal to, uh, well, not that, that, let's say x is equal to, uh, well, 3, obviously, but also anything less than 3, so 2, 1, and even zero. We could never succeed in this, this experiment. Um, so this could be, you know, asking a question of a, a person that 30% that of people uh, statistically will answer a certain way, or 30% of people are, you know, have a certain trait, they're colorblind or something, which I don't believe the probability or the, the percentage is that high, but what have you. If you just interview random people and there's a 30 statistics show that there's a 30% chance that any one person uh, is going to answer affirmatively to this question. Maybe that's the kind of experiment we're talking about. So we'd have to find all of these probabilities and then add them together. So that's just what we're going to have to do. So we have n, uh, so 7, choose 3 times 0.3 to the third times 0.7 to the uh, fourth, then seven choose two times point three to the fourth times point seven. Or sorry, to the second times point seven to the fifth, and seven choose two times point three to the first times point seven to the sixth, and then seven choose one times point three to the zero times. Or sorry. Uh, See, we already did 2, so this was supposed to be 1, and this was supposed to be 0. 0 and 0.7 to the 7th. Okay, so then we add all these together. So, that'll be fun. I'm just thinking, let, let's make this a little faster. We want to do the same thing lots of different times, and just changing some numbers. Uh, so let's make a function in our calculator that'll do this. Uh, we always want 7 to be n, so it'll be 7, choose, and then just the number of successes. So then we'll just let that be x, and we'll change what x is in the table. We'll multiply this by uh, 0.3, is consistent throughout all of them, and we'll raise that to the x power. And then we'll multiply that by, well, 0.7, that's always the same to the power of uh, 7 minus x. Okay, so then we'll just change what x is. This will be, we can change it for 3, 2, 1, or 0. Uh, we can make it to the power of 3, 2, 1, or 0. Then this will be 3, 2, 1, and 0, which will make this 4, 5, 6, and 7. So where can we do this? We can do this in the table. So I'll do for 3, 2, 1, and 0. So we have all of these here that we can uh, 
uh, add up. So let's see if we can do this. There we are. Over here, see if this will drop in. It did good. here, make it a little bigger, that's not what I wanted, alright so we just have to add all these up, now we have something to reference, so we'll put in as many decimal places as possible. numbers are right rather than checking all of them but we should have four of them we have four of them uh, and this should be about right so uh, the probability of having three or fewer successes about 84 sorry 87 point four percent of the time or 0.874 or so uh, so that's a way that you could uh, use your calculator to to make multiple calculations in a row like that and, and then just add them together. Um, be a little faster than typing in this, this in a bunch of times. Uh, yeah, definitely. So, let's see. Let's look at a, another problem like this one with a bit of a twist. 31. So we want the probability that K is... K is greater than or equal to 10. N is 15. And P is 0.75. Uh, okay, so this, this isn't going to have the twist that I thought. Um, tell you what, this, I mean, this one is its just the same. All right, we're just going to set up all of these. We're going to add up a bunch of things. Just the same steps. So here I'll I'll change it a little bit. And we'll just we'll remix number thirty one. So we want to know the probability that K is greater than or equal to two um, in fifteen trials. So if you think about it, we would have to start at two and, and do this kind of a calculation for two successes, then for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, all the way through fifteen. That seems not good. So rather than finding the probabilities of greater than or equal to two, how about if we find the probability that k is less than or equal to one, which would be, you know, th this would be. Uh, two or bigger, this would be one or, or less. So that this is going to be the, the complement of this guy right here. Uh, so we could just take uh, one minus this, uh, and then we'll get this. So we just use the complement to find what we're looking for. Uh, so let's find this, which is just a couple of calculations, subtract that from 1, and, and we'll be done. So uh, that would be uh, 15, choose 1, times 0 0.75, 0 0.75 to the 1, times 0 0.25 to the 14, and then 15, choose 0, this would be succeeding 0 times, times 0 0.75 to the 0, times 0.25, to the 15. Okay, so uh, go back in here. This one's already pretty much set up. Uh, so this is going to be 15. Let's just use insert to put a 5 there. Uh, choose x. Uh, this needs to be 0 0.75 to the x, 0.25 to 
to the 15 minus x power. And now we can go to the table and do 1 and 0. So, ooh, teeny tiny numbers. Um, let's see. Um, so, point zero zero. So, seven zeros and then a four two. Right. Um, yeah. I put this down here where I can read it and write that down. Uh, so, point. Zero 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 four five six seven four one nine zero nine five one five nine uh and then the other would be that guy there. So point zero 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 three four five six seven eight nine nine three one three two two five seven. Uh, so we'll add these two together, that's what we need to do. And then subtract it from 1. Remember, we're finding the count, the uh, complement, and subtracting it from 1. So, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3, 4, 5, 7. And then 4, 1, 9, 0, 9, 5, 1, 5, 9, plus point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a nine, three, one, three, two, two, five, seven. And we're going to subtract that from one. And it's just uh, very, very likely there's. It's going to be 0 0.99. And that's not too surprising with a high probability of success on each of these trials. Uh, getting, uh, being successful uh, two or more times uh, is really likely. So we're not surprised to find this out when we subtract this from 1. We get 0.99, of course. Uh, so that's just using the complement of, of this uh, described event uh, to find the, the probability that we, that we are actually looking for. All right. Um, lastly, we will do 43, and we want to find the the probability that someone is going to be allergic to, uh, or a certain number of people are going to be allergic to bee stings. So, about one percent of all people are allergic to bee stings. So, what's the probability that there is exactly one person, exactly one, not one or more? Uh, in a class that is 20, uh, a class of 25 that is allergic to bee stings. Uh, so we conduct an experiment. We ask somebody, "Are you allergic to bees?" And assuming they know the answer for sure, they'll say yes or no. So we have 25 times we're going to ask this question. We're going to conduct this experiment. Uh, choose one times the probability of success. Well, it's got a 1% probability that that particular person is going to be allergic to bees. So I'll raise that to the first times 0.99 that they'll not be allergic to bees uh, to the 24th. So here we go. Uh, Twenty-five. Choose one times point zero one to the first power times point nine nine to the fourteenth power is uh, let's see what we got going on here. Okay, so it took me way too long to figure out that I put 14 instead of 24. So, about 0.196. So, 
So uh, about a 20% probability that somebody's going to, one person in the whole class is going to be allergic to bee stings. And then it'll come less likely as we, uh, well, it might become more likely for a while and then less likely that lots and lots of people will be allergic to bees. Um, so that's the last one. Uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope that was helpful.